Hey everybody, welcome back to Pentiment. If you missed the last one, we were invited to dinner at the Abbey. And, uh... Yeah, so I'm gonna go do that. They're doing, they're getting ready for the St. John's uh, celebration in the middle of town. And my apprentice decided to stay there and I was told to come to the Abbey for dinner alone. Oh, I went too far already. This is the way I need to go. If I was in good terms with the Abbey, or Abbot, I'd probably be staying in that guest house. But I am not. There he is, Father Gierno. God bless you, Andres. I'm glad to see you received my invitation. Are you ready to eat? Yes. Good. Andres, thank you for coming to dinner. Thought you didn't ever want to see me at Kearsall again, Father. What changed? Yes, well, the Lord calls us to forgiveness, even when that might be difficult. I think it's high time we reconciled, Master Mela. Please sit, we will pray together. Bless us, O Lord, in these, in these your gifts, which we are about to receive from your bounty. Lord, direct each of us here toward your wisdom, prudence, and guidance in our future actions. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Amen. Brother Walsall was indeed prompt in delivering my message. I'm surprised you've just designed to drop by, deigned to drop by at all. I guess that's deigned. You've done quite well for yourself, after all. It's good to see your time at Kursal was not squandered. You even look the part of the famous artist now. What have you been doing in recent years after leaving such a mess in Tassel? I have a commission of Mary and Christ waiting for me in Nuremberg, but my patron wants to keep adding more of his associates in. I'm dreading going back to it. Surely the Lord will grant you a strength to succeed in such a difficult endeavor. Right. And why did you really invite me, good father? In truth, I had hoped to discuss the rising tensions between the Abbey and the townspeople. I'd like to clarify the situation to you, Andreas. thing doesn't really matter. I don't think I should lash out at him exactly yet. Clarify what exactly? I simply want to ensure you understand the circumstances objectively, from all angles. I believe you've only heard from one side of the issue, Andreas. Otto's little speeches about taxes don't account for the entire situation. Why demand such high taxes then, Father? Libocution? And some pheasant. With the scriptorium closure, the taxes are necessary to make up for the lost income. Just because you decided to close the scriptorium does not mean the townsfolk should suffer. Would you rather the brothers suffer instead, Andreas? The Abbey relies on taxes to survive. The town folk know taxes have risen and fallen in the past, and have shouldered the obligation willingly. Brother Guy has gone known for the expenses himself. <clears throat> Raising taxes is the best way to cover those costs. Hmm, but what about prohibiting the peasants from using the forest? That's a new restriction. The forest belongs to the Abbey, and the peasants have no right to use it. Legally, it's theft. I 
true. Swabian and Bavarian law allow you to control the land as you wish, but the peasants are saying that these restrictions go against God's divine law, not any imperial rule, Father. God, in his wisdom, established the church with his law, and they would do well to remember that. But doesn't God's law account for graciousness and charity? The peasants have exhausted my graciousness and charity for too long already, and have little regard of the church's authority itself. The monastery and church exist to help stop such foolishness and help regulate mankind's sin and greed. The peasants and townsfolk have gone too far. I hear they will continue their disobedience by collecting herbs on St. John's Eve. The whole town knows I've forbidden it. The matter is grave, and I will communicate, excommunicate anyone who defies my order. You would condemn the town over something so petty? That is up to them. Remaining impartial will be impossible as long as you're in town. Support me in ending this foolish rebellion. You have a reputation in town, Andres. You're a successful man, and the townsfolk believe they are like you. I'd like you to convince the other townsfolk. The printer, for example, that this uprising is not in their best interests. The rest of the town will follow, and the peasants will have no chance to resist. We could end this peacefully. Peasants have genuine grievances. Why not talk with them and negotiate? I am a forgiving man, but Otto's stubbornness has challenged even me. Otto is past the point of talking, Andres. That's why I'm begging you to help in the matter. Let both sides say they're not going to talk to each other. The other side's not going to talk to them. Please take more time to think of it. I'll apolo I apologize. We must conclude for now. I must excuse myself. I am expected to leave the service at campfire. Comp, comp line. Okay, it's an hour. Think on what we've discussed, Andreas. I trust you can find your way out. I will, Father Abbot. Good night. Yeah, I guess I better go to the celebration. It's a pretty nice night. Artists, the ones who lived with the Gertners, got mixed up in the wonderful killing of the rat, the Baron. Or that rat, the Baron. Yes, Andres Mailer. I know your damned name. Anyway, no time to talk now, fancy man. It's time to call the fire. Does St. John's Eve mean a lot to you? St. Eve, right. <laughs> Aduan's Mama Perchta, pagan goddess of the Alps. <laughs> oh, right, I'm going to go. <laughs> Enjoy the evening, Andreas. But if you want my advice, stay out of the woods tonight. <laughs> Mr. Andreas, look how big the bonfire is. The decorations are so fancy. St. John's Eve Festival is a big event in Tassing. I missed it last time I was here. Haven't you ever been to a festival like this, Caspar? No, I've never seen anything like this. 
Can I stay and watch the bonfire and see the costumes and watch them collect herbs, Master Mela, please? All right, but follow along and don't get in their way. I'm too tired for the festival. I think I'll just turn in for the night. Yes, I promise I won't make trouble. I'll see you tomorrow, Master. Andreas. Salutations, you must be the illustrious artist. Pascal Inson Eisenkopf, pleasure to meet you, but call me Baltus, please, it's much more familiar. Master Andres Mailer, pleased to meet you. Yes, yes, you're Mailer, we all know, let's cut the long winter pleasantries. What brings you to Tassing, Baltus? Baltazar here decided to stay in this godforsaken town for whatever unfathomable reason after his cart broke. It's not unfathomable. I enjoy the calming vistas and peace and quiet. It has not been neither lately. And what is it that you do, Bathus? He's an inventor, of sorts. I make all manner of mechanical contraptions. For all the use it is. The mind of the inventor exists to create, to build, and to go one step further. One step further toward the garbage heap, ha <laughs> ha. Very inspiring thought, Altus. Why, thank you, Master Artist. Speaking of, have you had the chance to look around town tonight? Imagine the sights could be also be inspiring to your artistic mind. Tassing certainly looks cheerful with the decorations and bonfire. Indeed, look at the peasant ingenuity. Consider the bonfire itself. It is built to allow the air and heat to flow through it at great speed, and how it roars. It's a clever piece of instruction, but Otto's a clever man. It is a feat almost worthy of a university degree. These people have natural traditions. They've managed to figure out many clever things without even the most cursory education. It is knowledge that hails from preceding generations, lived experience passed along the chain of time. Not quite the knowledge of a rigorously educated mind, perhaps, but nonetheless useful. You don't need a university education to be smart. Of course you would say that. Either you know these people like I do. God has assigned them their place in the order of the world for good reason. There is some merit in learning from the peasants. Even you, Werner, given the understanding of herbal remedies. Their traditions are profane. Consider the Eve of St. John, tainted by their pagan rituals. It's an affront to Christ. St. Elgin's warned against precisely this nearly a thousand years ago. Patron saint of goldsmiths, bishop of... whatever. Worked tirelessly to convert the pagans to Fl of Flanders to Christianity. And nothing has come of these pagan festivals in all that time. The harm infects a man's eternal soul. You might not see it. God can. Where'd this newfound piety come from? Don't pretend you know anything about me. I've been on the pilgrimage to Ach Achen. Located in the western ends of Rhineland, Achen is an ancient city built around thermal baths. It houses the remains of Charlemagne, as, many, as well as many other works. I visited the Marian shrine and stood in the presence of those holy relics. Ornate golden reliquiar. Swaddling clothes and loincloth of Jesus and Virgin Mary's dress and the decapitation cloth of God John the Baptist. To be in the presence of St. John the Baptist, the heading cloth was an experience I'll never forget. Forerunner of Jesus Christ, the name suggests responsible for baptizing Jesus, who's beheaded at the I've seen the reliquiary several times on my visits to Antwerp. Seems as though have done you little good. Perhaps you'd visit again. Now, now, let us keep peace in our hearts as, as brothers in Christ. We're here to celebrate. I'll let you continue with your evening, then. Good night. A very good night. Oh, and do come by my workshop, Master Mailer. I'd love to exchange ideas. It would be my pleasure. Splendid. Tell them. Mello. Oh, 
I remember till. Hello, Master Baylor. Evening, Till. Enjoying the festival? Very much so. Perhaps feel a tad of tad old for the more active of the celebrations, but I enjoy the sights and signs. Did you know the word for summer solstice leads back to the Romans? I thought you didn't read Latin. I picked up a few words over the years, and I still have the mind to put two and two together. Admirable, I must admit. There's nothing, Master Mela, mainly proverbs and the occasional, occasional word, hence. That's hard to read. <laughs> Such as it looks at this time of year, the sun rises high for a long time, and then it's always here, there, for, before falling again. A fitting allegory for the great cosmic arc of mankind, rise and fall. But to make up for that, dancing, leaping, Joy and mirth. People do seem elated, but I don't think the same applies to Abbott to now. Otto's courting danger, I agree. Going against the decree of the Abbey like so. But the festival has always had a rebellious streak of jest and mockery. I don't see it as sacred as some. It has to be sacred enough for the church not to condemn it as heretical. True enough, Master Mela. Ah, I wish I could read more about all this. Oh, with the Abbey selling books from the library. I hoped I could get some for myself, but it's proved to be far too expensive. Klaus and his printing have proven to be more of use, of more use, and a fair bit cheaper. Have you come across any interesting tales? I have indeed, Master Mela. Or I didn't quite understand everything. The text was in Latin. It was by a Roman named Strabo. It was about geography. That's why I noticed it. I don't believe I had the chance to read anything by him. It was a fairly complicated read, I must admit. The book was about many kinds of barbarians, which also included the Recti tribe, which I read about years ago. The people who used to live on this very land before the Romans arrived. He called this place Ratinum and described it as a cloister of drab huts, and its people hostile and warlike, only interested in hunting and fishing. There was something about man's and his sons, I couldn't understand a lot of it. In any case, when the Romans came, most of these locals were driven out, but come, some were captured to work in the fields and the mines. What were they mining? Salt, I guess. It used to be the backbone of this land. What happened to the locals who were forced out? No idea. Imagine that after the Romans were driven off, when the Empire started fa falling apart, maybe the barbarians came back. But were they really the same people? Or nomads from elsewhere? Guess we may never know. Thank you for the quick history. I'll let you get back to the festivities. Enjoy yourself tonight, Master Mela. Tell later. Andreas. Say, how do you like the bonfire? We built it nice this year, big and steady. It's a fine setup, Carl. Excellent work. I know we can't compare to where you come from, but we still give us a, give it our all. The celebration of the light and prepared our way for the Lord. Anton, you remember Andreas Mela, the master artist? Yeah, I've seen him around town. Son, be polite. Uh, hello, Master Mela. How are you? I am well, thank you, young man. Anton's a good boy, let me tell you. A bit of a rascal, as you can see. But he's got a good head and a good heart. Likes to hide it, though. Ah, Dad, will you stop? Ha <laughs> ha, easy to rile you up, just like your mother. How is Helena? Is she not attending the bonfire? She'll join us later. She went with Martha to dip their shoes into the stream and to pick some flowers for the garlands and wreaths. It's important to hold the traditions. Right, especially with the times we're having. Besides, maybe Martha and Helena will come across the balsam of fern out there. Haha. <laughs> What's funny about that? 
Fern don't flower. That means no power to speak with to animals with for you, boy. Don't worry, Anton. You can always get a garland with St. John's wort to ward off any demons or evil spirits. Yeah, I got that, Anton. Make sure to keep your eyes open for those spirits walking the earth tonight. Evil spirits and demons? I've never seen any myself. And you won't have to if we're careful, my boy. The bonfire will frighten them off with the help of the Lord. That's why we have the feasts and celebrations. Speaking of, what do you think of the festivals so far, Anton? It's fine, I guess. I like the fires when they are lit. The mountains get to twinkle like the stars. I don't like when people get drunk and rowdy as the night goes on. They get into fights and all. Well, your dad keeps the trouble away, yes? Yeah, he doesn't like it when those damn bastards go too far. Language, boy. God doesn't look too kindly on blasphemy. But those are your words, Dad. Best you don't quote me. Quote the scripture instead. It's better for your soul. You listen to your father, Anton. I will do, just... Hey, boy, what did I say? Don't let your mother catch you with that mouth. Haha. <laughs> Well, I'll let you get back to the festivities now. It was a pleasure. Till later, Andres. Why, Martin, look who it is. Good evening, Andres. Andres, you're staying for the festival, I hope. Of course he's staying. Who wouldn't miss this? Especially after your burly boys built such a beautiful bonfire. Yeah, that's alliterative. A burly boy like me would do anything for you, Dove. Couldn't help myself. Regina, Martin, you're both feeling very festive, I see. The food, the fires, the dancing, it really is a night to enjoy. It's to honor the anniversary of the birth of the Blessed John, the vigil for those who prepared the, he who prepared the way. Yes, yes, I need to like everyone to have to be in a have it have a good mood in their hearts and a good food in their bellies. Hmm, as a hermit who wandered the desert, living off locusts and wild honey, he probably wouldn't agree. No, I'd like to live off some wild honey myself, if you catch my meaning. Uh, so are you going to heed Otto's call to go into the forest? Nah, I'm really not looking for trouble. There's enough of that going around. And you, Brigitte, not gathering any herbs? My place is by Martin's side. The word of the abbot is the word of the church. It's improper to go against the word of the church. Only slightly less improper. Than all the time you spend with Veronica. <laughs> oh, Brigitte, I'm sorry. It was a joke, came up poorly. It's good for the heart to have cherished friends. It's fine. Andreas, I was about to say, the bonfire is enough. We will dance until our legs begin to waver, right, Martin? We're not missing for the world. That's delightful. Hope you have a great evening. You as well, Andreas. Until later. Doing a little exploring. I don't even know if I've been up here. I thought this construction's going smoothly.
painting of the Virgin Mary. Hmm, what does the labyrinth symbolize? Carving of Saint Stea, Statia looks quite old. Salt mine. Oh, this is where the graves are. Hello, Master Mailer. You're looking well. Thank you, Smokey. How are you? Well enough, I guess. Rostlov went his way a few years ago, which I suppose was bound to happen. Miss the company sometimes, but now there's no one to keep me from my gossip. No one to tell me tell it to either. Have I missed much? Heh, the things I could tell you since you left Tassel. We'd be here till Kingdom Come. Oh? I did see another Imperial Reichspost, Reichspost courier ride from the Abbey a few days ago. Private mail service from my third and taxis family approved by Holy Roman Empire. Well, the guy dropped the bag once. It looked heavy. The bat he must be doing better than the Abbot is letting on. Does that happen often? Once or twice a month. Odd with what the Abbot's been saying about the Abbey struggling. It doesn't help that the abbot has tightened his restrictions so close to St. John's Eve, too. The townsfolk get up to all sorts of mischief, then. What sort of mischief? I'd wager Johan and Kat will find some corner to play in again. It's practically tradition at this point. Veronica and Brigida might go out for a midnight dip by the waterfall, too. They've been swimming out there for years. Now everyone's getting clever trying to stay out of the abbot's eye. He's a former, rightly so, he's an ass. Didn't see you in the town commons during out of speech. Aren't you standing with the peasants? Well, their cause doesn't really affect me, does it? I'm as worried as anyone about the soldiers rushing through here, but the new taxes and restrictions don't bother me. I understand why they're upset, but I've been doing fine out here with the less than they have. Nothing will change for me if they get their way. You could still support them. No, I don't want to get involved, fine as I am. Supporting them would be the proper Christian thing to do, I guess. But when I have any of them when any but when have any of them done the Christian thing for me? The Christian way is to help without expecting anything in turn. It's the giving that counts. Easy for men of means to be benevolent. All I want is fairness, decency. I've given them my work for years, but they refuse to treat me right. They mock me for my... blind faith. They laugh at the way I stink. I can't help that, you know?
Hence one must be even stronger of heart to forgive them their follies. I'm not sure I have it in me. Ah well, enough of that. Thanks for stopping by, Master Mailer. Till later, Smokey. Till then. sleep here. Put these downstairs. Oh, probably at the festival. I can hear mice. This is much more comfortable. Nico's as good as his word. So you put more lights in. Alright, I think I'm gonna uh, quit, st uh, stop it here, and we will continue this on Sunday. Uh, tomorrow we have the last Gal uh, Genesis Noir, and um, so check that out, and hope you have a great weekend. Bye-bye.